avoidant personality disorder, avoidant attachment. They both have avoidant in the name, so what's similar about them and what is different? I mean, the obvious answer here is avoidance. Avoidance being going away from something, moving away from something that's unpleasant to us, that's stressful, but there's a lot of differences between these two, so let's talk about that. I think maybe the most glaring difference between avoidant personality disorder and avoidant attachment is that avoidant attachment is an attachment style and it's not a diagnosable disorder. If you went inside the DSM, which I have right here, the book that the therapists and everybody used to diagnose disorders, Avoided attachment isn't in there. It's not mentioned because it's not a disorder. Maybe it's mentioned like a little bit here and there, possibly. I don't really know, to be honest. I don't think it's in there. But it's not something that's diagnosable. It's considered normal. Okay, maybe it's not considered normal, but it's considered like it's not that bad that it needs to be in the book? I don't know. It's kind of weird to me that we use the DSM to be honest about things like this because to me avoidant attachment is a problem and it does interfere with somebody's life but we don't put it in there because it's not a full-fledged disorder so that's what it is but it's a difference. Avoidant personality disorder is in the DSM for good reason and avoidant attachment is not. One of the reasons maybe why avoidant attachment isn't in there is because something like avoidant personality disorder involves your personality and it involves personality traits. Personality traits are pervasive. They are something that we've been practicing for a very long time. They are the way that we move throughout the world and they're hard to change. It doesn't mean that they can't be changed, but they're difficult to change because it's the typical way that we operate in the world. Now, if you know anything about me, you know that I also say that avoidant attachment Attachment is difficult to change, but I think maybe it's a little bit easier to change. You know, attachment styles can change and they can flip from relationship to relationship. They can be different depending on the context. And that's not to say that a personality disorder can't either, although part of the definition of a personality disorder is that it's consistent across all contexts. But I think maybe that's the difference here. Avoidant attachment, it can kind of change and you can have a little bit more fluidity with your attachment depending on circumstances. And that kind of leads me into the next thing, which is that somebody with avoidant personality disorder, they have a much harder time coping with life, functioning in life. And what I mean by that is the general definition that we have when it comes to disorders, which is that they have trouble with friendships, they have trouble with relationships, and they have trouble with work and vocational activities, things like like that. Somebody with an avoidant attachment style, though, generally it's only really about intimate relationships. It's not so much about getting a job and doing things in the world and having friends and whatnot. It's really very specific. So the impairment, the difficulty in coping with life and getting through life is much greater with somebody who has avoidant personality disorder than somebody who has avoidant attachment. And by the way, if you don't know anything about these two things, I have videos on both of them and I should mention that avoidant attachment, I'm just using avoidant attachment to capture dismissive avoidant attachment and fearful avoidant attachment. So if you want to learn more, I have other videos please check them out. There are plenty, 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 plenty here for you to watch. So I may sound like I'm repeating myself a little bit here, but I'm trying to pull out very specific things about each disorder, although avoidant attachment isn't a disorder, but avoidant personality disorder, they tend to have trouble across all situations, like I mentioned, and it's in all contexts. So they'll have trouble in their relationship, but it's not just going to be about intimacy. It's just going to be trouble in general with the relationship because they have this feeling of inadequacy. So it's not necessarily when they're close with their partner. They could be far from their partner, like whatever. It doesn't matter what level they're at with their partner. There's just usually going to be problems present. And of course, every individual is different, so I don't want to generalize too much here. But when it comes to avoidant attachment, the issues really show up with the intimacy level. When they start getting close to somebody, that's when they feel uncomfortable. And that kind of rolls me into my next point here, which is that somebody with avoidant attachment, they feel uncomfortable, they feel maybe a little bit threatened, they want to get away from their partner, but somebody with avoidant personality disorder, although they can feel those things, it's really about feeling inadequate, feeling like our self-esteem is low, feeling like we're not good enough, feeling like we're always being judged, feeling like we're always being criticized. And somebody with avoidant attachment, 
they may not have those feelings. They may not feel judged, they may not feel criticized, but when they're in an intimate situation, they're still uncomfortable. And related to this, somebody with avoidant personality disorder, they generally feel like they don't really fit in with people. They feel detached from people in general, not just partners, not just intimate relationships, but out in the world with friends and family and work and like coworkers and just strangers or whoever, they feel there's a distance, like they're different, like there's something wrong with them. There's not, but that's how they feel. And on the other side of things with avoidant attachment, they may not have all of those fears and all of those worries. Again, it's really zeroed in on relationships and specifically intimate relationships. But even within an intimate relationship for somebody with an avoidant attachment, they may not feel like they're criticized. They may not feel... I, I know I say that a lot because I think it's true for a lot of people, but it, it doesn't have to be true. They don't have to feel criticized. They don't have to have a low self-esteem. And here's another difference that we may not have thought of, but it's an important difference. Somebody with avoidant personality disorder, because they're afraid of the criticism, because they always feel judged, they may go out seeking reassurance from people, especially their intimate partner. If they're close with somebody, they may be a little uncomfortable about their partner and they may feel criticized by their partner, but because of that criticism, they may constantly seek out their partner to reassure them, to validate them, to let them know that they are, they do love them and that they aren't stupid and they aren't all these negative things that they may think about themselves or may think that other people are thinking about them. So the avoidant personality disordered person may seek out people, particularly their partner, but somebody with avoidant attachment is probably going to distance themselves from their partner. So they're going in opposite directions here, and I think that's important to take note of. Now both of these things can overlap, especially because somebody can have avoidant personality disorder and have an avoidant attachment style. And also the fearful avoidant attachment style, I think maybe has a little bit more in common with avoidant personality disorder because somebody who is fearful avoidant may feel inadequate. They may be unsure of themselves and they may feel a little different from other people because they have this kind of erratic way of relating to people in intimate relationships and they have difficulty with this stuff. And I think it's important to know here that both people, whether you have a personality disorder or you have an attachment problem, it's still a problem and it still sucks to have either one and it's still something that should be addressed if it's something that you want to address and you really kind of should want to address this because you'll have a healthier and happier life. I don't know why you wouldn't want to address these things. Well, actually, yes, I do know why you wouldn't want to address these things, partly because you feel like you can't, because you feel like you're inadequate or maybe you feel like you get along fine in life. If it's an attachment problem, you're like, whatever, it's not that big of a deal. It's only when I'm in close relationships and I don't even want a close relationship anyway. <laughs> But um, there's another difference. Maybe somebody with avoidant personality disorder, they may want to have a close relationship with somebody with a maybe a dismissive avoidant attachment. They're not so interested. They feel good being on their own and independent. I know that these topics get a little tricky because they're a little weird. They overlap a little bit. And this is one of the problems with psychology and trying to diagnose things and decide what somebody has. And this is why we always recommend to go in and see a professional because the average person isn't considering all of these different variables and isn't considering like, okay, it looks like this, but it could also be this, or it could be both, or it could be these other things that I'm not thinking about. And that's why a therapist is somebody who can really help you because they have at least had the training to know about all the different things that something could be. Let's also point out that there is help for both people, whether you have an avoidant personality disorder or an avoidant attachment, there is definitely ways that this can be helped, both in working on it on your own, but of course I think it's always best to go in and see a therapist because a therapist is somebody who you can have these like pseudo relationships with, who you can kind of like practice with and they're not gonna judge you. They're not going to be that person that you're afraid of. Maybe at first, maybe it's scary at first because you're not used to being with a therapist, but eventually you settle in and then you have a calm, neutral person that can help you work through these issues. If you've been listening to this and you've been thinking like avoidant personality disorder sounds a little bit like social anxiety, I did do a video a long time ago about that and they are very similar. It's a little weird that we have both of them, but really you can kind of think of avoidant personality disorder as more of like an extreme social anxiety that's pervasive all the time. But if you want to learn more about that, I have that video. 
But let me know, have I cleared this up for you? Has it made things more confusing for you? Because I know it's a little tricky. And to be honest, I think we haven't quite defined exactly what's going on in both of these instances well enough, at least in a way that can be communicated well. So we're all on the same page. So that's my opinion. What's your opinion? I want to hear it. Leave me a note down below in the comments.